Well, here we are, folks. A trip two years in the making. Glad to have you guys on board. We're here with Air Ivanhoe. We're gonna set flight on a fantastic cabin adventure. Uh, basically, what we plan on doing is seven days out in the bush, just catching walleye, catching pike, whatever we can, and having a great time. This was certainly one that we have been planning for quite some time, so we're looking for a hell of a ride. Look forward to having you guys on board. <laughs> well, as before mentioned, we're staying at the lodge tonight. And tomorrow morning, basically between 11 and 2, we're going to fly out on the planes with all of our gear and whatnot to turn at one of the outposts. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a long day. Today has been a long day, but we're looking forward to getting out there and hopefully catching some walleye. Even out here, we have a nice little fire going. How about we take a tour inside and take a look how the uh, the accommodations look like. Oh, we got a barn? <laughs> they have bugs. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's actually beer mugs in here. Yeah. Holy smokes. Apparently, water gets hard when it freezes. Yes. You sure you want to get in an airplane tomorrow? Let's see here. Well, good morning, folks. Day, the true day one of our adventure here. So we're just filing all the paperwork, making sure that we're tip top and whatnot uh, for Transport Canada. Uh, but yeah, basically right now we're sitting put here just because it is overcast. Unfortunately, the plane does not take off when it's overcast and rainy. So we're, we're staying put. We have about two hours left at the main launch. Uh, then we're going to have to mosey on over to the other lodge there just because this room is booked up for the evening. So we're going to fill out the paperwork. We're going to get ourselves situated, move over there and uh, start weighing ourselves in. And hopefully we take off this afternoon. Well, that's it for this cabin at the main lodge here. We're going to head over to the main lodge, which is just across the street. And, uh, and start watching a safety video and go through all that process before we head on out there. We still have a bit of time. We know, uh, I know that there's a few flights still ahead of us, but at the same time, we want to get uh, get all of our stuff together and make sure that we're in fine tip-top shape when the, when the time comes to get out there. Like me, this is like taking these kids to Disney.
can get that out of the way. They're gonna be crazy. So time to load up some soon, boys. Yeah, we're getting there. Getting close. We're the next uh, bus out of town. The weigh in. So we're just weighing everything that we're taking to see how much uh, how much we can fit in the plane. Getting all saddled up here. Well, Ryan, you're, you'll be the first one to head out. What are your thoughts so far? Okay. Ass right now, I'll be totally honest with you. We're gonna do a little road trip and stop in another lake and drop some stuff off, some booze and some parts, and then we're gonna tour on to Paul Lake and make sure that the uh, the bear hasn't uh, thrown a housewarming party for us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then uh, we're gonna come back and uh, our Joel's gonna come back and scoop you assholes up, and uh, and we'll be good to go. <laughs>
but we have officially made it. We're just unloading the boat. Ryan's still up in the air there. Sorry, the plane. Used to saying boat here, but yeah, we're uh, we're just unloading. The dock, unfortunately, is underwater, as you can see here. So we couldn't really utilize that in order to unload everything. But yeah, slowly but surely. There goes Mark, our awesome pilot. That flew us out here. And Joel and Ryan coming in. One after the other. How's the flight there, Ryan? Flight was pretty awesome. Stopped off at um, the heck lake was it? Sherlock Lake. We helped some guys out there, changed the stovepipe, and then got back in the the bus and flew over here. It was a pretty good, pretty good flight. And uh, we did a couple laps around here to see, take a look at a beaver dam, and then just as we actually dropped in over the cabin here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we came in and we. Just, and Joel just like whoop, dropped her down. We were like almost doing a nose dive. It was yeah. pretty wick. Yeah. It was a really good time. Shake it yeah. as much as you can. The boys are just separating the uh, the gas and the water because uh, obviously some of the tanks were underwater once we got here. So quite a interesting process. Never seen it before, but yeah, there was a lot of water in there. What are your thoughts on the process, boys? We're just getting the incense ready for the, the cabins. <laughs> so I'm doing the very important task of watching as they pour the gasoline to well, ensure, that no, <laughs> ensure that there's You're no one. Ensure that there's no water in there. Dart. <laughs> the boy's firing up the motor, yeah, making sure that she works. Takes off. Jake has the water. Well, I can't feel it, so it's great. <laughs> Boat number two. Oh, well, there goes our lifeline. Hey, Joel. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye, civilization. Yes, sir. So, Ryan, open bar. It is an open bar. We got Canadian Club 12 here. We got Glenfiddich 12. We got some uh, Wayne Gretzky's cream for the morning. 
Cap Morgan, some Jamesons, and uh, we're gonna go blow up a beaver dam and get two more bottles delivered on Monday <laughs> in, in payment from Joel. So, yeah, we got some booze. Good to go. So it's finally time to relax. We uh, we had some wraps just a minute ago just to fill the gullets a little wee bit. Not really time to relax just yet. Ryan's going to cut down a tree so we have some firewood and a decent fire for tonight. And uh, yeah, we're going to help him out with that. But as you folks can see, by the amount of water here, it's pretty high. And that's what Ryan was talking about, blowing up the beaver dam. Tomorrow we're going to head out there and we're, uh, we're going to try to lower this water a wee bit by uh, by destroying the beaver dam that caused this. Um, as you can see here, everything's underwater. The whole beach is a challenge to uh, even pull in the uh, the actual aircraft, so we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Let's, uh, let's hope for the best. <laughs> After that chop down, time for cleanup. But as you folks can tell, the trees are quite different up here in the north. So obviously this is part of the coniferous family, but I am not quite sure what type of species of pine that is. Very interesting. I'll have to check that out once we get signal service. Yes, there is absolutely zero cell phone reception here, which is fantastic. And fortunately, we do have a Zolio uh, SAT communicator with us just in case of an emergency. Uh, we can contact the spouses and we can contact the main lodge uh, if anything were to occur. But uh, that's not going to happen this weekend or this week, I should say. Jeez, keep on forgetting that there's, we're going to be seven days out here. This is only just the beginning. Torpedo. In the words of many explorers, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, it is dinner o'clock. Mighty beautiful out there. So we're Finally starting to get all cozy in here. We got the wood stove going, getting some hash browns. We, as you guys saw just a minute ago, we got the steaks already done on the grill here. But uh, yeah, as you folks can see, it's a pretty rustic little cabin with uh, a bunkies. So basically six guys can sleep in here. Might get pretty tight with six guys, but, uh, but yeah. We're uh, we're slowly but surely getting uh, getting comfortable. We're already comfortable. Ready for some steak, Jake? You betcha. <laughs> Mighty fine. The cheeks are rosy. That was a good meal. <laughs> well, I'm not going to bother showing you folks via vi video this, but uh, we actually have the Northern Lights. So we're going to take a few pictures. I'm going to grab the tripod right now, and we're going to take a few pictures out there, and I'll, uh, I'll attach it to, to the video right after this.
with Jake pouring over his coffee. It's time for day two out here. Beauty of a sleep. It, was got, it got a little bit chilly last night. Must admit. Dropped down to probably 8, 9 degrees. But just the sheer dampness uh, from the rain that we had all day yesterday. It just kind of cooled things down. So we got the wood stove going back here. Time to do some fishing. So it's time to set sail. We uh, got the, all the fishing rods rigged up here. We're gonna try trolling for the first little bit. Key is to find them first. Once you find them, it becomes a hell of a lot easier. Seeing as this is our first time here, and we do have some intel in regards to the locations, but at the same time, you just never know with fish, right? So uh, we're going to go out here for a little bit, see what we can catch, and hopefully something for lunch. There's one on the boat here. Yeah, we got one here. Let me get him unhooked. You guys can come see. Oh, a perfect hook, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, just, just had him. You just using a little jig, too. Okay. There you go, boys. First one of the day. There we go. First one of the trip. Here, let's see. Where's the... Uh, 34, so it's uh, 36. Ah, doesn't matter. Ah, he's just a little guy. Well, no fish for me at least or Jake Ryan caught that pike as you folks saw earlier but that uh, we just backed into or well, pulled into the location where the beaver dam is that we're gonna knock out so I think we found her it uh, <laughs> there's no I don't think it's deniable that that's it um, but she'll be a bit of a waterfall once uh, once it fall uh, we, we crush her down We're just backing her out of here just because uh it'd be a bit challenging to swing the boat around. Ryan keeping it between the navigational beacons. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I haven't sunk a oh, sorry. I've only sunk one boat. We're not gonna go with two this time. 